Here we have a real driving test at Barnet Test Centre, as you can see it on the left hand side there. We're just pulling out to the main road. Normally you'll park your car with your driving instructor on the main road. I just prefer parking my students on the side road. And then we're coming out onto the main road where you'd normally be parked. Uh, please leave a like on the video and here we go. This is the way that you would pretty much always go. You can turn right here. We are gonna turn right on this occasion at the pub and that's just going around the residential road here on the back. But you can go straight on, that's the A1000. The A1000 is probably the most common route. You can continue, just keep them going straight, 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 straight for a long time. You'll get some double roundabouts up there, and then you'll get the Barnet Bypass as well. The Barnet Bypass is a dual carriageway that can be a little bit intimidating because it's a high speed limit, and you'll just exit at the next exit shortly after joining the dual carriageway. Here we have the residential routes, as you can see, oncoming traffic, park cars on both sides of the road, dominate the centre. The oncoming traffic has slowed down to a stop, that means we can proceed with caution. If the oncoming traffic, be ready to slow down and stop in this bend, keep to left, there we go, <sighs> just knew it was coming. <laughs> and you got this guy here as well, good times. Yeah, that's right, you back up, all right. Now we can get through. But like I said, be prepared. Um, less space, less speed. Rule number one, the driving. Less C, less speed as we were coming into the bend there. There's no such thing as a car that comes out of nowhere. Always anticipate there being a vehicle as we turn around bends or into new roads. Here we have someone at the van there. And then we have the construction here. So just less space, less speed again, just taking it nice and gentle. As you can see, the student's a really good driver. We'll find out if it's pass or fail at the end. Uh, if you do want to skip through, then you can skip through to the end and find out your results now. In the meantime, we're going to look at this test route at Barnet. Barnet is one of the better test centres inside London. And as you can see, it's quite residential, slow moving, nothing too intense here at Barnet as compared to some other test centres like Hendon Mill Hill. Just as a quick example, on your driving test, you'll be asked to pull over and stop on the left at least three times. This is the first occasion we've been asked to pull over and stop on the left. You can use trees as good landmarks to know where there's a section of raised curb. Try to avoid parking outside driveways. Driveways or drop curbs, as you can see on the left, where people have the actual driveways for the properties, they have lowered the pavement as a drop curb, and we do not want to obstruct people's driveways. So try to look for the trees, lampposts, as good landmarks, as you can see, for raised sections of curb and you'll pull over and stop like we said earlier three times on your driving test the examiners are looking to see how you pull over and stop where you stop and then how you move away shortly after here we have a junction by looking at the position of the vehicle we'll be turning left so we're going to check the interior mirror and the external mirror roughly five car lengths to ten car lengths from the junction and signal shortly after Positions are very important for your turns. You'll see the students very good at the positioning. So whenever they're turning right, like we did at the beginning at the pub, they'll be on the center line and in line with the center of the new road that they're turning into. That's the perfect position for right turns. Right turns are definitely more technical than left turns. Left turn positioning is just keeping roughly one meter from the curb on the left. You'll see outside the corner itself, the left corner, it would disappear out the windscreen. And then that's the point of when we would turn left. So we might be able to use this as an example here we're in a left only lane so by the looks of it we'll be turning left oh no <laughs> okay we did a little lane change there a bit risky checking the mirrors here moving around the back of the van not very nice position there from the van now for the driving test i would avoid that i wouldn't do any sudden changes of lane there just before a junction can be a bit risky i do know the students very good at checking the mirrors and looking ahead um, I like to say looking long, so we're looking as far ahead as possible, and they make plans early. So I'm not too sure what happened on that occasion. They're also very good at the road markings as well. Okay, so this is the second occasion we've been asked to pull over and stop on the left. Again, it's all about where we stop. So we've got that tree again as a landmark, and the students use that for reference to see where there's raised curb. Interior mirror, left mirror, and signal to the left to pull over to the left. Then we're going to do our all-round observations. That's breaking your neck. From the least dangerous side being pedestrians, first check the least dangerous side. Last, check the most dangerous side, and that would be the overtaking traffic on the right-hand side if we're parked on the left of the road. <laughs> Confusing. Ooh. Um, yes, basically every time you pull up on the left, make sure you check your shoulders before you pull away. Always signal as well. Very, very good tip. 
Not a lot going on here, so you probably get the show me, tell me question. At the beginning of the test, you will be asked to read a number plate. Shortly after, they'll ask you a tell me question. So you might get one about the lights. Looks like we're turning left here. The corner's disappeared. Start to steer left. Tell me questions for lights would be, how would you know that your lights are working? Whatever lights it is, always answer with the same answer. And you'd say, I'd turn them on and check the reflections. This is occasion number three that we're pulling over and stopping on the left. Oh, looks like we bumped the pavement there. Maybe a little bit too close. Oh, looks like we're getting a bit closer. Be careful. So we're not blocking the driveway. So they seem to have moved forwards here to the telegraph pole. Another good landmark for raised curb. I believe we're possibly going to do... Oh, no. The manoeuvre for this was actually the forwards bay park. That will happen towards sort of three quarters of the way into the test. So that's just the last time we've been asked to pull over and stop on the left. There was no emergency stop on this test as well, so we won't be doing an emergency stop. But these are the type of roads where the examiners will get you to do the maneuvers, i.e. the parking, pull it up on the right. You know how we talked about pulling up on the left? There's also pulling up on the right. So remember, least dangerous pedestrians to most dangerous before you move away. Oncoming traffic would slow down and stop there, so it's definitely good to proceed. And the van... It's actually reversing, isn't it? So proceed as well. Watch the doors open on the other van there. There might be some people um, walking out. Generally, they don't look. So whenever you get construction sites and construction people, vans, etc., deliveries, be very cautious. They could just step out without looking. We're not going to get into why. It just tends to happen, at least from my experience. So be very cautious whenever you see a van might be a person around that might step out without warning. Be ready to slow down and stop, so checking your mirrors early, and just being aware and planning. And that's the last skill to learning to drive, by the way, awareness and planning. That's definitely the skill that this student has a lot of. So we'll see what the end result will be for this test, but hopefully we'll see what happens exactly. So we're waiting a little while here. We can't see the whole road, but positions are turning right. So let's see how much traffic's coming from the right here. Okay, there was a bus, now there was a lorry, car. Van. <laughs> a lot of traffic. I guess we'll be waiting a little bit longer. It was attempt to move out there, so maybe there's something coming from the left. There was a little inch forwards. There's the bus, the bus is pulling over and stopping. Obviously, traffic behind the bus. Okay, we're off. Seems to be a good junction. Okay, back onto the main road. So we've left our residential area, which is generally around 20 miles an hour. You can have higher speed limits of 30. This road is a 30 as well. Remember, if there's regular street lights and no signs, our theory test tells us that is a 30 mile an hour zone. Do keep looking for speed signs. They may be painted onto the road. They may be attached to the lampposts or poles on the side of the road. If you see your speed signs, you will know your speed limit. If you don't see any signs in those regular street lights, remember that's a 30 mile an hour zone. Another good tip for speeds is speed bumps. Generally, speed bumps will be a 20 mile an hour zone. Wouldn't go over speed bumps much faster than 20. Depends what type of vehicle you drive, but a little bit faster than 20 sometimes can scratch the bumpers onto the road surface, going over the bump a little bit too fast. Okay, we're turning right again. Very good position. Always good with their mirrors, the student signals. Look at the distance from the parked cars. Roughly a door length. If someone was to step out, open a door, no risk of an accident there. The road markings are very poor there, but it looks like we're in the main road. We're the priority at that last junction. Do look out for the giveaway lines on the side roads, and then we'll know that the side roads need to give way to us. Giveaway markings are the most important road markings of all. So there you go, that van, a uh, little mini there, you could see had the giveaway lines and uh, was giving way and giving priority. And that's why they're the most important. So you just know that you need to stop, have a look and wait for the traffic to pass before we can go. So giveaway lines, super important. Good position, good speed, distance from both sides here. The van, got it right this time. And the oncoming traffic, lovely, nice little safety bubble. Positioning here looks like we're positioning for the right turn again. Nice onto the center line. We're gonna go out into the center of the road. So you see that white line in the center of the road? When that disappears, turn. Sometimes we turn earlier because there's a parked car there, but generally that's what you're looking for. So if you want reference points, that's one. 
There's many different types of reference points for different things. Round about here, slowing down, looking to the right, no one's there, turning left, first exit. Oncoming traffic, no. Keep your distance, dominate the center of the road, make sure we've got that meter or door length or width, sorry, I always say length, width. Um, from the park vehicles, oncoming traffic, fines, plenty of room for both of us. Proceed with caution, right mirror check, moving out to the center of the road, dominate, and then coming back to the left for this left bend to make sure that we're not into the oncoming traffic. Nice and safe position here. And a good adjustment with the speed there. Less space, less speed. So they predicted that gap was going to get shorter, narrow, and they slowed down early. So when they got to the gap between the parked car and the oncoming traffic, they were at the correct speed. The oncoming traffic was passing. No need to stop then. So very good awareness and planning again. That's just a call back to what we said earlier about the student. And it is the last skill to learn for driving. Awareness and planning. Look as long, as far ahead as possible. And make your plan early. That way there are no surprises. Again, good domination here, oncoming traffic, adjusting the speed, rule number one of driving, less space of speed. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. If you don't like touching the like button, touch the like button. Following the Audi? Why are we going so slow? Are we pulling over to stop again? We've done that. Okay. All right. Sometimes the examiner asks you to pull over and stop on the left more than three times. Um, don't know why. Okay. Whatever. And then they'll just say, right, drive on when you're ready. Follow the road ahead. Sometimes it makes us feel like we've done something wrong. So, you no, know, four times can happen. Sometimes the students get back and they're like, Scott, the examiner <laughs> got me to pull over on the left like a million times. I thought I did something wrong. This like, no, it's just part of the test. So don't be surprised when it happens four times. Mm. And the thing is, are they going to do it again for the maneuver? No, they should just do the maneuver on the run. So what happens is when they get to the maneuver part, which is we're roughly halfway through the test now, by the way, um, is about three quarters of the way. So not too much longer, maybe another five, 10 minutes, we'll get to the car park. As they drive into the car park, it's a train station car park. The examiner just say, oh, you see all the bays up ahead? Yeah, I just want you to drive forwards into any bay. So it could be the left side, the right side. You'll have to do this at a right angle, so 90 degrees. So you'll be straight down the middle of the aisle of the car park, and then you'll choose whichever bay and just drive straight forwards into one of the bays. Finish between the lines, and you pass. Now, that's not the only part to do with that maneuver. We've got to reverse out after we've driven forwards into one of the bays. That's when the observation is going to become super important. Now, the observations are the leading reason, and they have been for over 10 years, for not passing the driving test. So observations are really, really important. And you'll probably hear me say this on many of the other videos. So observations, super important. So make sure you do your blind spot checks so you break your neck, look over both shoulders again before we reverse out of the car park space on our maneuver. We're going to come to that in the next five minutes. Here we don't have any lane marking down the center of the road. So we're going to call this just the one lane. So one lane going in our direction and one lane for the oncoming traffic. Looks like we've got this park van and oncoming van. So slow down early, break, break, break. Good, get the right speed and the right position. If you think there's enough space to continue, do position early. So be out from the park van in the middle of the road early. So the oncoming van can see our position and adjust for us and give us space. If we don't do that, they will not give us space. So be positioned early, out early, slow down early. Make sure that you're at the right speed so that when you reach that less space situation, the park van, the oncoming van, that pinch, the bottleneck, you're gonna be at the right speed to come to a nice slow stop if you need to, or just keep gently going, right, through that small gap. So it's all about the awareness and planning again. Second time I'm calling back to this student. Very, very good um, awareness and planning. It's that time again, guys. If you don't like touching the like button, touch the like button. 
Slow doesn't mean slow. Slow means hazard. You can see there's quite a lot of slows here. It's like, why? Why are we slowing down? I can see. It's fine. Visibility's good. The road's wide. It's no big deal. So slow doesn't mean slow. No need to slow down here. It just means hazard. And it's probably because there's a few little bends. They're not major bends, but they're still bends. And there's also gradient change, isn't there? We're going uphill. So these are kind of considered to be hazards. So you'll see a lot of slows on windy, hilly kind of roads. But if you feel like you're under control, then you can maintain your speed. Obviously, don't exceed any speed limits. Look, we've got warning triangle there, gradient. So that's another hazard, isn't it? Might not be a reason to slow down, but definitely something to take into consideration. So just remember, slow doesn't mean slow. Slow means hazard. Look at this boring barnet. Not a lot going on here. Lovely road though. Just straight, nice and calm. A few parked cars here and there. We talked about that. Adjusting the speed early, oncoming traffic. Speed limit seems to be a 30 maximum. I haven't seen any 20 mile an hour signs. Now, with the 20 mile an hour signs at Barnet Test Center especially, there is one road near a school, very close to High Barnet Station. And that is a 20 mile an hour road. It's a very long road. It looks like identical to the road that we're on now at the moment. Um, very low, uh, long road, one lane, and there's one sign that says 20, and then that's it. So if you miss that one sign and you're not sure what the speed limit is, very easy to go over 20 miles an hour. Now, there's a little hack I can give you. If you're on this road, this 20 mile an hour road, and you look to the side roads, you'll see there's speed changes. It says it's turning into a 30. Not this road, just hypothetically talking, turning right around about second exit. Mirror, mirror, signal, no one on the right, let's get going. Lovely, you can go on the circle a little bit. If you can do your mirrors and signals for the exit, brilliant. But because it's a mini roundabout, just the mirror checks and exit. No need to signal for mini roundabouts. So look out for the speed change sign on that long road opposite High Barnet Station, just off the A1000. Uh, I'll try and find out the name of the road. If someone knows it, please put it in the comments down below. And that is one sign that says 20, and then the rest of the road, no 20 mile an hour signs. Everyone is gonna be going over 30, sorry, over 20, probably even over 30 on this road. Do not let them give you a full sense of security. It's a 20 mile an hour road. Remember the hack, look at the side road, you'll see the speed change. It says it's ending 20 and beginning 30. So that tells us if we turn into the side road, it's gonna become a 30 and the 20 ends. So. Therefore, we're on a 20 road, aren't we? So that's a nice little hack. Cyclist, no need. We're going to be turning left. This looks like Cat Hill. Another long road. Looking ahead, I'm just trying to see if I can see any of these zebra poles with the flashing beacons. No, but I can see lots of triangles here. And there's a red sign coming up and it says, something way control, don't know what that number is. Wait here until green light shows. I don't know how I managed to read that. Who knows what the number is? If you can see the number in the top left corner, put it in the comments down below. I can't, I'm trying, but I don't think I can read that. It'd be a complete guess. Okay, and wait there. So that's the important sign, that one there. Oh, I couldn't even see the numbers, we're moving off. Okay, um, so yeah, if you get temporary traffic lights, roadworks, just like this, look for that red sign that says wait here. Make sure we don't go past that sign. That's where we need to stop. Sometimes it's in different positions, so that's why it's very important because of the roadworks. They'll put that sign in different positions to uh, give space for everybody to get through. Um, so do look for that. Super important. Nice judgment here, huh? That car was quite far, but not slowing down at all. So if the oncoming traffic is speeding up, be ready to slow down and stop. Let's have a look at this car. So it's slowing down. It's changing direction. So we're going to continue. Silver car slowing down, staying on their side. Plenty of space to continue. Any more? No. 
Okay, so the road's ours. We're just going to dominate. We have priority here. So we're going to hold that safety bubble again. So it's roughly one uh, door width. So if you imagine you opened your door, the passenger door, please don't do that, just imagine. Um, that's the spacing that we'd like to keep from the left. Uh, usually that will put us into the center of the road, just like you can see here. Um, you might even see there's sort of a grayish line in the center of the road, and that goes into the center of the car. So that's a reference as well. So it just shows us where we are in the road if you line up a part of the road with a part of the car. This is what we called reference points. Slowing, yeah, this guy. You can feel free to beep your horn if you don't feel that people reversing out have seen you. You can always beep your horn. Um, the pedestrian decides to use the road. So we're just going to take care of this pedestrian. We have to go here. There's no way that car would get through. So you can see it stopped anyways. We have priority here. Silver car has to give us priority. Someone playing on the side of the road there, but seemed to be reasonably safe. Dominate. No oncoming traffic. Brow the hill, anticipate a vehicle coming over the hill. Stop sign on the left. Stop signs are mandatory. Regardless if you think you can see or not, you must come to a complete stop. Lovely. And now we can edge forwards. Peep, creep, whatever you want to call it. I like the lean and look. So just kind of leaning, trying to see a bit more of the road. Keep edging out until you can see it's safe and then cross to the other side. Good position here, not putting ourselves out or on the pavement, just giving enough room for that white vehicle to get through there. The oncoming traffic. Nice position here. Is that a 20 on the road? Yeah, it is. All right, we had a speed change. I think that was maybe after the stop sign. Put it down in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that's where that happened. Uh, it looks like we're going to be staying 20 onto the main road. Oh, no. Speed change. So now it's going to 30. We're going ahead. Oh, but they stopped for the lorry. Oh, bro. No. Now they're stuck on the pedestrian crossing. Can you see the pedestrian crossing has just gone active as well? Serious driver fault. Who had priority? Us or the lorry? If you have priority, try to continue. You're the boss. So unfortunately, it looks like we've just received our first driver fault from what I've seen at least. However, this will be a serious driver fault. And one serious driver fault is enough to fail the test. Now, if we want to try and flip the coin and go a bit positive here, Stay focused. I have actually witnessed a few students and the examiner said this to the student with me present. <laughs> you did do this. You did do this. However, you've got a brilliant instructor. I really like him. And I'm going to pass you. And that's a true story, by the way. I'm not going to mention the name of the instructor, examiner, sorry. Um, but I don't think they're examiner anymore. I haven't seen them for a very, very, very long time. Okay, this is the car park that we were talking about. So this is the part where the examiner is just going to get you to do it on the move. You enter the car park. Oh, all right. Maybe they asked them to stop. A bit awkward. They're going to say, any bay, you choose. I don't care. Just finish between the lines. When you're ready, drive on and forwards bay park. Thank you. All right, here we go. Which bay? Which bay, huh? Good choice. Going on the right side's better because there's more space. Gives us more time to turn the car, get the car nice and straight, and finish directly in between the lines. Look at this. 10-10. Very small bays in this car park, by the way. So the student's done an amazing job. Having the right car can be useful for the driving test. And we're going to say it's going to give you a guaranteed pass or fail. But the right kind of car can be helpful for maneuvers. Reverse cameras, sensors, good mirrors. You can get warning beeps on vehicles, warning you something in the blind spot. You know we were talking about those observations earlier. So before we reverse out there, even though it's dead quiet, we've got to do those observations. 
looking over your left shoulder then your right shoulder really break your neck twist your body make sure your shoulders move when you do your observations turning left good nice slow down stop there for that junction there's no road markings however we're leaving a car park so we're just doing our observations to make sure it's safe to exit the car park here we're going to come down and round and on to the main road and then back to the test center we are literally minutes away from finishing this driving test unfortunately it does look like we received a serious driver fault let's see what else comes up along the way at the end of the road i'd like you to turn left inside mirror outside mirror shake it all about and signal left position left following those yellow lines on the left nice look at that good reference pointing same for roundabouts as well so as you reach a roundabout like those yellow lines on the left as we're turning that it points it twists it bends so we want to do that as well like that yellow line so as you come into the junction you just kind of point uh, to the lane that you want so if you're coming into a roundabout point towards the lane that you want stop if it's safe go and then you'll go directly into the lane that you're pointing at. Very, very helpful. And the foundations for all junctions, especially roundabouts, if you're one of the 99% of people, I'm going to go extra, 99.999% of people that hate roundabouts, then this will be incredibly useful information. So the secret to all roundabouts or the foundation, all right, come on now, Scott. There's a show me question. Is speed just slow so if you're running you'll go to jogging you'll go to walking speed maybe baby crawling speed maybe stop have a look what's going on okay and then take your time and complete the junction nice and easy you can breathe you can think <laughs> there's no stress or at least less stress okay you are learning it will be stressful um however that's the secret so apply that Every single junction, running speed, jogging speed, walking speed, walking up to the junction, like we would do if we weren't in the car. Have a look, is it safe? Yeah, all right, okay, keep walking. Then maybe start jogging and running again, and off you go, yeah? So speed is the number one reason for lots of things, okay? It's the number one rule of driving, less space, less speed. The number two rule of driving, less C, less speed. And the number one reason for most accidents, okay? So just consider the speed, especially at junctions. Okay, we're almost finished. This is a little cheeky shortcut. So we go left here, just in front of the Tesco's. Turn left again, mandatory left. You say goodbye to the little posh cinema over there and the BP petrol station where all the instructors go to get a coffee and then now we're back at the driving test center as you can see it here on the right this big white building you cannot miss it at the end is the actual test center itself so on the corner part there you'll see the stairs and that's the entrance the test center turning right back into the test center nice early position into this box junction coming up to the arrow and preferably stopping on top of the arrow for our right turn so if you see a right arrow at junction that's it uh this was a fail so if you're here for the result unfortunately we received a serious driver fault there at the junction going straight with the lorry it's been a pleasure please do leave a like and if you like this content we'll see you for some more until then stay safe guys bye bye